Hello, my name is Mark Shinesk and I'm an application engineer with Scylla Design Solutions. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to stylize data objects in your Autodesk InfraWorks model using style rules. In this particular model, I have inserted a shape file as a coverage area showing the zoning map for the particular city I'm working in in this model. Now it is currently styled all with a single rule style for residential, but I have some commercial and some industrial zones in here, and I'd like to stylize those with a different color without having to go in and pick each individual zone section and manually changing the style. I can use the style rules to make those changes automatically, saving myself some time. Now the rules and the techniques that I'm going to show you here can not only apply to coverage areas, but they can apply to any object and data source or created data that you make in your Autodesk InfraWorks using the same process. Now this particular zoning area came in from a shapefile with attributes and one of those attributes is a zoning area that shows the different zones uh, and de depicts the different zones that are, are in this particular coverage area. So what I'm going to do is come here to my data sources dialog and here's that coverage area that I have in already. I'm going to reconfigure it by pressing the reconfiguration button. Now, I can't use those attributes directly, but I can apply those shapefile attributes to some of the common uh, location or common name or description or category type uh, properties that are in that particular data source in InfraWorks. Here you can see name, description, category. If I come to the table tab, you can see some other common ones, tag and user data. Since all these are blank, I can go ahead and fill that information in and tell it to read the shape file and bring in that attribute data. For instance, here's user data that's blank. Maybe I'll select on that. That highlights the, the column and I'll pull the pull down box. And here's a list of all the attributes in that shape file. I happen to know ZD is the header for the attribute containing the zoning information. So I'll select that and add it to my list. I could have also put this under name, description, or tag in one of those blank dialogs, but I chose user data for this particular example. I'm going to go ahead and close and refresh, and it takes a moment and it will redraw your model, refreshing that particular zoning map. We'll give it a second here to regenerate, and once that's done, I will select a zoning area to verify that that particular attribute did get assigned to the coverage area. I'll choose an area on my map. And in the properties window that comes up, I can look down. There's that user data tag, and there's R A. This was read from the shape file and has been applied to this particular area. As well as the remainder areas, they will have their own unique data, user data tag based upon the shape file attributes. I'll go ahead and deselect that. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a rule style that's going to take advantage of that data read from the shape file. Under my Autodesk uh, InfraWorks user data menu, under the create and manage your model, if I come down here, I'll find a command for style rules. I'll go ahead and select that, and it'll open up a panel here on the side for style rules. Now, when you're creating a style rule for objects within InfraWorks, you've got to make sure you put it under the proper uh, category, depending on the type of data object you're trying to stylize. Since this zoning map is a coverage area, I have to make sure that I'm in the coverage area tab of the style rules section. You can see in the default model there will already be some style rules created, some of which will be active and some will be inactive. And this is indicated by the check mark or the lack of check mark in the enabled column. There will also be a name, the expression, and the type of style that you're going to use. So I'll go ahead and create a new style. Let's say let's do commercial areas here. So I'll select the plus sign here to add a rule. I will call this commercial zone and click OK. Would help if I spelled it right, but I can fix that later. You can see it's added the column here, but the expression and the material is empty. I'll go ahead and edit that by clicking the pencil icon here and edit my rule. First of all, I'll fix that name. I'll put a Z instead of an X to make sure it's spelled properly. And here I'll put a description, commercial zoning area from shapefile data. And next I'll have to build an expression to read that shapefile data attribute from my InfraWorks properties. I'll choose edit and it'll open up the filter expression dialog box. Now it's divided into three areas. Here's the properties and, and recently used expressions. 
Here's the expression builder dialog in the middle. And here's a property list window that I can use to pull properties from the individual parts. So right now I'll come here under properties. You can see it's divided into 3D model, common, coverage, elevation, geometry, lifespan, stylization. There's some operators, math, comparison, logic. I can expand on these by pressing the chevrons up or down. Some basic functions and some spatial tools. I'm going to go for properties. So the properties I'm going to use is going to come from the common area, because remember that user data was under the common section of the properties, and come down here and say user data. That's where I added that attribute information. I will double click on that and it adds that property to my expression dialog. I then need an operator. So it's going to be a logical operator. I'm going to say if user data equals this or if user data equals this or user data equals this, then use the commercial uh, style. Okay. So first off, I'll start user data and then I can either type the letter uh, the uh, equals operator or I can come down here to operators and in comparison, there'll be the equal sign and I'll double click that. You can see it adds it to my expression editor. And now I'll need to replace this pink value. I'll delete that. And then I could type in the zone if I wanted, C-A, C-1, C-2, etc. Or I can come over here to the properties list. Since I selected user data, I can pull down the properties and here's a list of all the properties, user data, and here's all the zones it read from that shape file. So I'll say C-1 and it adds it to the list. Now it's hard to see here, I'll zoom in a little bit because of the color, but there's user data equals C1. Notice the C1 is in single quotes. Okay. If I try to use double quotes there, it would be an invalid expression when I try to apply it. Okay. Since I have more than one commercial zone, C2 and C3, I'm going to have to add to my expression. I'm going to use the logical expression OR. I can either type it or I can come down here to the logical functions and choose it from the AND or the OR there. So I'll say user data properties equals C2. I need to put a space in there. And I'll continue on. Or user data, whoops, I need a space there, equals C3. At this time, I'm just typing. I'm using a combination of picking the commands and typing them. Okay, I'll stop with those three, C1. So if user data equals C1 or user data equals C2 or user data equals C3, that's my logical expression. To save this, I'll hit the OK button and that adds it to my expression list. If I needed to edit that again, I could just go back and edit and add to it. Now in this final section, I need to pick a style I want to use. I'll go ahead and hit add and I'm going to choose the default commercial zoning coverage from the coverage styles and hit OK. So my style rule is here created and I check it as active. Now all, the last thing I have to do is run my rule. So I'm going to run that, uh, that rule set. It's going to apply to all the rules and rerun them all. But once that's done, you can see the areas that are designated with those C1, C2, or C3 automatically show up with that style rule. One thing to pay particular attention to though if I had set a manual style when I initially brought that data in, that would take priority over this rule style. So manual style always takes priority over the rule style. That's why I typically use rule style when I'm bringing in data for the first time. So if I need to run a rule style on it, it will automatically uh, accommodate those rules as I bring them in. And again, I can use this type of technique to stylize any other object I bring in my models as I'm doing it. Road widths, road lanes, road styles, building heights, uh, building roofs, any of those attributes I can reach from shapefiles, I can build a rule style to take care of that. And that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at mshadesk at siler-ds.com or email us at cadtechnical at siler-ds.com. Please don't forget to visit our blog www.siler-ds.com forward slash blog and we hope to hear from you. Thank you and I hope this helps. Have a great day.